Here we have a very long non-conducting line with a uniform linear charge density negative lambda, where lambda is positive. Find the electric field produced by this line of charge a distance r away. A very long line of charge has cylindrical symmetry and its electric field lines are all perpendicular to the line of charge. So Gauss's law is much more convenient than Coulomb's law for this scenario. E dot dA equals to the magnitude of E times the magnitude of dA times cosine the angle between E and the dA. As discussed in the previous video, when we use Gauss's law to find the electric field, we need to make a Gaussian surface that goes through the location we are interested in. And we need the E and the cosine to be constants so we can take them out of the integral. What Gaussian surface should we make? We need a cylindrical Gaussian surface with a radius r so it goes through the point we're interested in. There's no requirement for the height, so we can just make it an arbitrary height h. Based on cylindrical symmetry, the electric field does have the same magnitude everywhere on the curved part of the surface. However, a closed Gaussian surface would also include the top and the bottom of the cylinder. Since the electric field lines spread out like this, as shown in this cross-sectional view, the field line density is higher closer to the center, which means the electric field is stronger closer to the center. So E does not have the same magnitude everywhere on the Gaussian surface. But luckily, what is the flux through the top and the bottom of the cylinder? It's zero, because all the field lines go parallel to the top and the bottom. None of the field lines go through the top and the bottom. So when we add up the flux, we only have to consider the part of the Gaussian surface that has non-zero flux, which in this case is the curved part of the cylinder. And for this curved part, E is a constant we can take out. What about cosine? Everywhere on the curved part, the electric field goes radially inward, and the outward normal vector dA goes radially outward. So the angle between E and the dA is a constant 180 degrees, and the cosine 180 is negative 1. And the integral dA only includes the curved part of the Gaussian surface. And the curved part only is not a closed surface, so I did not draw a circle over here. So the flux now equals to E times negative 1 times the area of the curved part. To find the area of the curved part, we can cut it open like this. So it is a rectangle. And this rectangle has a height h and a base, how much? That is the circumference of this circle, 2 pi r. So the area of the curved part is the base 2 pi r times the height h. Now this equals to q enclosed over epsilon naught. How much charge is enclosed by this Gaussian surface? We would multiply the linear density negative lambda by the length of the line that is inside the Gaussian surface, which is length h. And we can cancel the h. Since h is arbitrary, we do expect the h to cancel because h should not affect the electric field we're looking for. We can also cancel the negative sign, and then we divide by 2 pi r on both sides, and we get the electric field to be 1 over epsilon naught 
and lambda divided by 2 pi r. With all these being constant, we can say the electric field is proportional to 1 over r. It makes sense for the electric field to be proportional to 1 over r. First, the farther away, the weaker the field. If you look at the cross-sectional view, the same number of field lines are spread out onto circles. The farther away, the bigger the circle, the same number of lines are spread out onto. So the line, the field line density, is proportional to the number of field lines divided by the circumference it is spread out onto, 2 pi r. So this is proportional to 1 over r. Another thing is, in reality, we don't usually have very long lines of charge. But if the distance here is much, much smaller compared to the length of the line, and we stay near the middle of the line, this method would give us a very good estimate on the electric field calculation.